After finding some gold flakes and ancient artifacts, the Legina team is really close to a big discovery. They're still working hard to find Oak Island's legendary treasures, and now they're closer than ever. Rick Legina found something significant, and everyone is eager to know the latest discovery. Could this be the big break they've been looking for all season? Come with us as we uncover what Rick Legina found while digging in Oak Island's restricted area. The Exploration of the Money Pit After conducting drills in the restricted area, the team has been unearthing artifacts that date back to the 17th and 18th centuries. Additionally, they explore the connection between the U-shaped structure and artifacts found in them, as they are suspected to be linked to a deep pit. The team receives drilling data and judges the possibility of locating a tunnel on the island. The construction of a tunnel comes after the discovery of strange Roman numerals in a U-shaped AP structure on Oak Island. The team rediscovers the tunnel this time, positioned 30 feet east of the garden shaft, and uncovers more evidence of precious metals in a wood sample. Their objective is to validate the tunnel's existence beneath the garden shaft and explore other potential targets through the creation of lateral tunnels. While they wait for permission from the provincial government, the team hopes that Duma Contracting Limited will extend the garden shaft to 98 feet, allowing them to break into the tunnel blow. There is some sort of connection here, and whilst they are in desperate need of figuring out the connection, so are we. If they get lucky, this will tell us. Alex Legina and other team members join the Money Pit drilling operation whilst Mart and Uncle Rick remain at the lead site. The crew receives a carbon dating report on a wood sample from the boring hole that reached the tunnel on the eastern side of the garden shaft. The team engages in discussions about their progress in drilling a borehole at Oak Island's Money Pit. Although they have reached a depth of 78 feet, remaining about 25 feet above their target, they persist in digging, examining clues in the spoils obtained from a circular hole containing artifacts from the 17th to the mid-18th century. The team is pleased with their findings, guessing their potential military significance and its potential link to Danville's voyage in 1764. Objects were sent back to the lab for further examination. Rick, Marty, and the team reviewed the latest developments in the Money Pit drilling operation holding a video conference with Duma contracting officials to discuss advancements and the code of practice for extending the structure. They await the issuance of two codes of practice, one relating to the deepening of the currently guarded shaft and the other allowing lateral work and tunneling. Delays may impact the team's progress. Simultaneously, they may continue examining a mystery rock foundation discovered last year with artifacts dating to 1775 the crew discovers a shard of pottery and a musket with Roman numerals, raising questions about their origins and connections. Non-destructive X-ray radiation is employed to examine the musket artifacts, confirming they could be from an old regiment. Roman numerals on the musket sparked interest given their previous discovery near Smith's Cove in the early 1970s. A piece of ramrod featuring Roman numerals is found suggesting a potential link to the U-shaped construction. The team expresses unwavering confidence in uncovering more secrets and discusses the possibility of revealing a massive tunnel in Oak Island constructed with an ancient Egyptian tool known as Pix. Efforts are made to film an anomaly in an underground chamber beneath the water using a high-definition camera with a 360-degree pan lens. The team aims to connect this tunnel to the original shaft. Rick, Marty, and their team persist in investigating Oak Island's mystery, planning to reach the tunnel's furthest east extension, potentially revealing a route for water with high metal concentrations to reach a potential treasure zone. There is a high-density anomaly to the west of the garden shaft. The crew drills a new borehole in the garden shaft, discovering soft material, indicating proximity to a structure. Gary Drayton and Peter, in their exploration, uncover a cribbing spike in an antique iron piece near Lot 5. Pondering their significance, the team continues searching near Lot 5, uncovering a piece of pottery that dates back to 1762. And a wooden chunk is discovered with signs of precious metals, leading to theories about a different structure in the area. Time constraints due to heavy machinery digging led the team to outline the tunnel path quickly, 
and unearth the true cause behind the money pit. The team eagerly anticipates the garden shaft extension project, requiring heavy equipment including a crane which is currently being assembled. Additionally, they are currently drilling a new borehole located a few feet east of the garden shaft. The team's objective is to discover another segment of the seven and a half feet high tunnel and pinpoint a valuable target for treasures. The team eagerly anticipates the planned discovery of a usual tunnel in their garden shaft. The Oak Island team hopes that this treasure search will provide useful information to help unravel the Oak Island mystery. The crew has uncovered a probable treasure tunnel, an old wooden beam dating back to a period before 1795 and evidence of gold and silver. The Oak Island team eagerly looks forward to exploring the mystery tunnel in their garden shaft, with Duma contracting limited representatives continuing to deepen the garden shaft to breach the tunnel. This may potentially lead to treasure and contribute to resolving the Oak Island mystery. The crew plans to carefully explore the tunnel, drilling as deep as necessary to confirm its content, expressing optimism that this endeavor will yield useful information and solutions to the numerous unresolved questions surrounding Oak Island. A significant clue has been discovered in the Oak Island's garden shaft, potentially leading to a treasure hunt. This year, the team intends to use drilling equipment to start a second borehole, D2, and investigate the tunnel system revealed in the D1 shaft. Recently, the Oak Island crew discovered a wooden structure at a depth of over 90 feet in the Money Pit area, potentially leading to the treasure's whereabouts. The team attempts to find the legendary wealth by following the trail of artifacts from the marsh to the original treasure shaft on the adjoining lot. The crew also discovered a strange iron band that previously belonged to the wheel of an antique cart or wagon dating back before the discovery of the money pit. The crew is actively engaged in exploring Oak Island, aiming to demonstrate the existence of a passage between the marsh and the original treasure shaft. They mark the potential targets with flags on any biological material that seems noteworthy. The team discusses the discovery of a metal fragment in borehole D2 in the money pit section, conducting the X-ray fluorescence scans to determine its composition. The metal contains a trace amount of precious minerals and even gold. Excitement builds as the team uncovers new evidence in the southeast section of the swamp. They believe they found additional traces of the ancient stone ship, estimated to have been built around 1700. The team is particularly thrilled about the potential to gather more information on the mysterious 200-ton ship discovered through seismic scanning. In 2019, what clearly was a ship was seen, and then all of a sudden, the realization that there could be two ships sparked excitement among the crew. They hope these fresh findings will support Fred Nolan's theory about the presence of a large treasure ship buried on Oak Island. Craig shares new information on the rumored wealth hidden on Oak Island. He notably mentions a piece of wood from the money pit, dating back to the 15th century, supporting the theory that work on Oak Island occurred relatively early and the original money pit was lost for many years. Craig also discusses a piece of gold-plated metal that was sent for testing. It received a positive response, indicating its historical alignment with the wood samples. These discoveries align with Craig's belief that man-made work was carried out on Oak Island and the original money pit location may have been lost due to cave-ins caused by flood. Tunnel carbon dating matching the wood in boreholes. D2 and CD2.5 are seen as crucial steps toward rediscovering the original treasure. Despite the team facing numerous challenges in their ongoing treasure hunt, including searching for skilled conspirators who may have hidden something valuable. A significant turn occurs when the Department of Community Culture and Heritage requests an immediate halt of their operations while the treasure appears within reach. Rick and his team anticipate a lot of hurdles in uncovering these treasures, setting the stage for future explorations. When Craig and Marty met with chemist, Dr. Krista, at St. Mary's University in Halifax, Nova Scotia for a more extensive scientific study of the metal object that was discovered in borehole D2. Dr. Krista utilized a scanning electron microscope to determine if the metal contained gold. The potential discovery of gold is noteworthy as it could indicate that the treasure hunters were not responsible for bringing the gold onto the island. Subsequent discoveries regarding gold in the money pit are revealed by Dr. Krista and Dr. Yang. 
confirmed through their analysis that the Oak Island treasure is a mix of gold, copper, and silver, with 65% gold and 26% copper. One thing is certain, Oak Island is full of mysteries and secrets, and the hope of discovery is what keeps these men going. Groundbreaking discovery, etching their names into the history books. But what treasures have been discovered on Oak Island? Treasures discovered on Oak Island. On Oak Island, some notable treasures have been found, and it is these that fuel the hopes of the crew that indeed, there is a larger treasure trove waiting to be discovered. Treasure hunters have been intrigued by the legend of Oak Island for more than 200 years. Some believe one of the greatest treasures of all time is hidden on this mysterious island off the coast of Nova Scotia, with theories ranging from Knights Templar gold to Captain Kidd pirate booty. Rick and Marty Legina have spent countless hours digging over the years and have discovered some top pocket finds. The Money Pit, the discovery that started it all. In 1795, 16-year-old Daniel McGuinness went on a fishing expedition to Oak Island. Upon landing, he came across an oak tree with unnatural markings. A depression was also spotted beneath the tree. Along with two friends, he began digging, finding patched logs at regular intervals. They would return years later with a larger group, and subsequent excavations revealed a structured pit. Somewhere to hide precious jewels, perhaps. A lot of subsequent discoveries have been found in the Money Pit. It marked the beginning of an ongoing 200-year treasure hunt on the island. Jeweled Brooch Now jumping 200 years at Lot 21 on the western side of Oak Island, the Leginas found a jeweled brooch. This was near where Daniel McGuinness had lived. Was it a treasure he had discovered? The Legina brothers are not ones to rest. They keep on forging ahead in their search for treasures on Oak Island, and their perseverance seems to be paying off. Granite stone. Found 90 feet down the money pit was a granite stone, one carved with peculiar symbols. No one has accurately deciphered the code, though one attempt gives the translation, 40 feet below, 2 million pounds are buried. This is why the money pit is the activity hub. Coded messages that need to be deciphered are written on stones, and perhaps the first person to ever decode them correctly would be led to a large treasure trove. Coconut Fibers During the early excavations of the Money Pit, searchers found large amounts of coconut fiber at a depth of 60 feet. But the nearest coconut trees were 1,500 miles away. A puzzling find, some believe the fibers could have been used to create a rope to lower fortunes. Oak Island continues to create puzzling questions in the minds of treasure hunters. Whilst there is a theory about how these coconut fibers came to be there, there is no definite correct answer yet. Perhaps one day, we will get the answers to these unanswered questions about Oak Island. Swages. The Leginas found two iron objects in Lot 21, on the western end of the island. These were later specified as swages, a type of blacksmith tool and dated as far back as the 14th century. The team saw the equipment as evidence of intense mining operations on the island. Oak Island is ancient, that much is sure. But how ancient? There have been discoveries dating back to the 17th and 18th centuries on the island, yet these discoveries are not even amongst the most ancient things discovered on the island. Nolan's Cross In 1981, Fred Nolan, an Oak Island resident and treasure hunter, discovered five large boulders that formed a huge symmetrical cross. Another boulder was found at the center of the cross with a human face and sword image, traits synonymous with Templar tombs. Now known as Nolan's Cross, these boulders might be evidence that an Atlantic fleet of Templars went to Oak Island and possibly buried some treasure. Numerous clues could lead to treasures on the island, but it remains to be seen whether these treasures really exist or perhaps they are just a pipe dream. Oak Island is not the only island to be littered with treasure in the world. Other islands around the world hold treasures worth up to a billion dollars and others do not. Let's check out these islands, starting with the Costa Rican treasures. The Cocos Island and Costa Rica treasures. Located 340 miles southwest of Costa Rica, the UNESCO World Heritage Site has been part of Costa Rica since 1832 and is filled with dense tropical rainforest. Author Michael Creighton was so enamored by the island that he modeled his famed Jurassic Park Isla Nublar after it, and Robert Louis Stevenson's classic novel Treasure Island catapulted Cocos Island to fame. 
the Lima treasure. The mystery that has confounded explorers for centuries is the estimated $1 billion worth of treasures hidden throughout the island. It all began in 1820 when Peru started a war against the Spanish Empire colonizing the Americas. The Argentine general, José de San Martín, planned to invade Lima, and the Spanish viceroy decided it would be best to remove all of the area's riches out of the war zone for safekeeping and return when safe. The Spaniards commissioned respected British captain William Thompson and his vessel, Mary Deer, to safeguard what is known today as the Treasure of Lima, a hall filled with gold coins, silver, diamonds, and a solid gold life-sized Virgin Mary statue. Captain Thompson and his greedy men ultimately killed all the Spanish soldiers and priests on board and headed toward Cocos Island where they buried the massive bounty. A Spanish warship hunted them down and the crew was convicted, except for Captain Thompson and his first mate, who both agreed to cooperate by locating and retrieving the treasure loot. But they both escaped once they landed on the island and were never recaptured. Hundreds of explorers have since tried to locate the treasure but have failed. Early expeditions were mounted by a man named John Keating in 1844, who was supposed to have befriended Thompson. On one trip, Keating was said to have retrieved gold and jewels from the treasure location after receiving a map from Thompson. Upon his deathbed, it is rumored that he shared the following inventory that was documented of the treasure. Some of the treasure rumored to be left on the island includes one chest containing altar trimmings of gold cloth with canopies, monstrances, and chalices all coated with gemstones of up to 1,044 pieces. One chest with two gold relic containers weighing 120 pounds with 624 topaz, carnelians, emeralds, and 12 diamonds. One chest contains three relic containers of cast metal weighing 160 pounds with 860 rubies, 19 diamonds, and other gemstones. One chest containing 4,000 doubloons of Spanish marked eight, 124 swords, 5,000 crowns of Mexican gold, 64 daggers, 120 shoulder belts, and 28 round shields. One chest contains eight caskets of cedar wood and silver with 3,140 cut stones, rings offering plates, and 4,065 uncut stones. Seven chests with 22 candelabra in gold and silver weighing 250 pounds and 164 rubies one seven-foot solid gold statue of the Virgin Mary with baby Jesus, weighing 780 pounds, rolled on her gold chasuble adorned with 1,084 jewels, including four-inch emeralds, six-inch topazes, and seven crosses made of diamonds. When German adventurer August Gissler became the official governor of Cocos Island in 1897, he was not interested in the small group of tobacco growers living there, most of whom he had brought over from his home country. He was obsessed with locating the solid gold Madonna and also the treasure of pirate Benito Bonito, and over the years had dug out an extensive system of underground tunnels in his quest. He ultimately left the island in 1908 after assembling clues as to where the treasure was located, but only walked away with a few random coins. The Lima treasure is not the only treasure that is said to be hidden on the island of Cocos. Other treasures attract people to the island, such as this next one, the Devonshire Treasure Pirates hiding treasures in Cocos Island started a long time before the famous Treasure of Lima happened. In 1818, British naval officer Captain Bennett Graham commanded the HMS Devonshire for a coastal survey in the South Pacific. He ended up changing careers to be a pirate after hoarding over 350 tons of gold from Spanish galleons he raided during his duty. The captain and most of his crew were ultimately arrested and executed for their actions. One of the ship's surviving crew members, Mary Welsh, who was sent to a penal colony but was later released, said she saw Captain Graham and his men bury the treasure on Cocos Island. With location bearings and a memory of the exact location, Welsh led an expedition to Cocos Island. But after many storms, the landmarks she remembered were long gone. This is not the only pirate treasure to be kept on the island. It would seem that this route was played by pirates a lot and they saw it as a desirable spot to hide their treasure. Pirate Benito Bonito's Treasure With a career of pirating over 350 tons of gold and burning Spanish galleons in 1818, 
Benito Bonito is rumored to have buried his treasures in a deep tunnel in the Wafer Bay area on Cocos Island. His biggest mistake was when he allowed two Englishmen to join his team of pirates. Several years later, the two men were captured and sent to prison, and in exchange for freedom, they promised that they would offer up the West Indian hideout of Benito Bonito, which resulted in the end of Bonito's pirate life. Explorers have conducted over 500 expeditions on the island, but with no success before the government finally banned entry. In 2012, British and Canadian media extensively reported that adventurer and engineer Sean Whitehead would be carrying out a major archaeological survey of the island using ground-penetrating radar and a snake camera. That expedition fell apart and never happened. The treasures on Cocos Island may never be found again, as it is now an official UNESCO site, which means it is out of bounds to treasure hunters. Despite it being out of bounds, hunters will hunt for clues on how to find the treasures hidden on islands like Ailsa Craig, even if it involves reading books that talk about treasure for clues. Ailsa Craig, Anno in the 17th century in Scotland. Ailsa Craig is an iconic island located in the outer Firth of Clyde in Scotland, not far from Glasgow. Traditionally, landing on the island has not always been an easy matter. It is quite exposed, but once on the island, its striking beauty is evident. A rumor of a hidden treasure on Ailsa Craig has been alive for centuries. This island rises abruptly from the sea to an elevation of 1,110 feet or almost 320 meters, a symmetrical cone of rock thrusting from the sea with 14 calamar dollars of the Ayrshire coastline. A treasure hidden in this knoll would be very difficult to retrieve, as many parts of the hill are inaccessible, thus making it a fantastic hiding place. So far, nobody has been able to unearth the treasure and therefore its existence remains a mystery. The owner, does not need to be concerned about this, as over the years, the value of the island has risen so high that the value of the treasure would only be fractional in comparison. Today, a beautiful lighthouse and some buildings exist on the island. The lighthouse was built and supervised by Thomas and David Stevenson engineers. Thomas Stevenson was the father of Robert Louis Stevenson, the author of the world-famous novel Treasure Island the most important book in the legends of pirates and buried treasure. Another link to the famous treasure, perhaps? Perhaps they are the biggest clues to finding the treasures on the island. Treasure hunters will hope that they have a bit more luck with treasure islands than their predecessors before them, as a crew unsuccessful tried to get treasure at Tupai Island. Tupai, Anno 1822 in French Polynesia. According to legend in 1822, the crew of the Chilean warship Araucano mutinied. Not satisfied with just taking over the vessel, the mutineers furrowed the seas of the Peruvian coast, plundering notably the treasures of the Peruvian churches. The crew then set sail for the South Sea, changing the name of the ship en route. The ship arrived at Huajin where the pirates, often drunk, bragged about having a fabulous stolen treasure on board. The captain stopped at an uninhabited island called Tupai, north of Bora Bora, where, as legend would have it, he buried the treasure. He planned to sail to Tahiti to get rid of the ship that had become a considerable encumbrance. With his hands thus freed, the captain wanted to return to Tupai and recover his gold. He tried to seize another ship but failed. The surviving mutineers managed to flee to Huahina, where they succeeded in convincing the missionaries that they were honest. They remained on the island through the years, by drifting to the four winds without ever being able to return to Tupai to recover the fruits of their rapine. In 1932, the value of the treasure was estimated at 20 billion pounds sterling. Around the end of the 19th century, an adventurer from Nova Scotia, Canada, named Blackett, finally found the treasure. To assure that there would be no witness to his find, he killed all 12 Polynesian employees on his coconut farm, the graves of whom were discovered later. Consequently, the Queen of Bora Bora forced him to disappear on a fragile boat, never to be seen again, without being able to recover his treasure. One of the later proprietors, Robert Cunningham, returned to his native land, Australia, after 24 years spent on the atoll. He swore never to have seen the slightest trace of precious metal on the island. In 1998, 
the Polynesian government became the owner of the atoll. Perhaps one day, this treasure with so much blood in its history will be discovered by a treasure hunter, and hopefully it doesn't involve any bloodshed this time. This treasure island, like the next one, will continue to attract hunters who hope that one day they will be lucky enough to lay their hands on its treasure. Isla Robinson Crusoe, Anno 1715 in Chile. This archipelago is named after Robinson Crusoe, also known as Juan Fernandez Island, but perhaps it should have been called Treasure Island. It was discovered by chance on November 22, 1574 by the Spanish sailor Juan Fernandez, as he deviated from his planned course. In the 17th and 18th centuries, the island was used as a hideout for pirates. It was also the site of Alexander Selkirk, who was marooned on the island and lived alone for four years before being rescued. For centuries, treasure hunters have scoured the island in search of booty which was reportedly buried there in 1715 by Spanish sailor Juan Esteban Ubila y Echeverria. International attention came in 2005 after Wagner Technologies, a funding company, found the largest recorded treasure trove. 600 barrels of gold coins and jewels worth about $10 billion seized from the Incas by Spanish conquistadors. This announcement set off ownership claims. When Chilean authorities claimed the treasure as government property, a standoff developed. Wagner Technologies said it would only disclose the treasure's precise coordinates once the government renounced its claim and that it would donate 60% of it to Chilean charities. The government did not back down and the treasure remains in dispute and unexcavated. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and check out another of our interesting videos.